Greetings and salutations, all my lovely, lovely people who are hopefully joining me today. I am Raymond Camden. Welcome to another edition of Code Break number four. Um, guaranteed to be in the top four sessions I've ever done. And I promise I'm going to end that joke one day soon. Probably not this year, but I, I won't be doing it forever. Uh, just for a very, very long time. Uh, but hello again, and welcome back. Uh, I would like to, uh, start off today, uh, by just telling you, uh, some quick metadata, just some quick housekeeping stuff, um, uh, about what's going on. Uh, next month, I have a couple of trips planned two conferences, uh, that may impact my schedule a little bit. Um, I will let y'all know. Uh, but I will say um, this Friday uh, at 4 p.m. Central, and I apologize, I don't have a link yet. When I do, I'll put it on my blog. Uh, but uh, this Friday at 4, I will be giving a hour and a half long talk on Alpine JS. Um, kind of like part uh, just me doing slides and demos and stuff like that. Uh, if you were here last week, you saw I did a real quick intro to Alpine. This will be a proper, let's take it step by step and actually show you stuff. Uh, but it's also going to be part um, uh, workshop as well. So at towards the end, uh, we're going to have some exercises that I'm going to show uh, and then have y'all actually build and we'll kind of you know, work on some stuff together. Uh, but again, this will be open to the public Friday, 4 p.m. Central. As soon as I get a link, I will share it with other people. Uh, and uh, Alberto, he's excited about this type of driving, but listening. Uh, yes, please, please don't look. Um, but I'm happy that you're happy. <laughs> uh, so, um, last week, if you were here, you remember I was able to give away a prize. Uh, that is thanks to my fine sponsors at Algolia. Uh, they have search as a service. I really like them. Uh, it's in use on my blog and I've written multiple blog posts about Algolia. So I use them and support them. And they have uh, said that I could keep giving away free stuff. Uh, so as long as they keep allowing me to do that, I'm going to keep doing it. So last week, I asked you all to uh, comment on what your last meal was. And I very arbitrarily just picked one person who I thought had the most interesting meal. So uh, this is not fair in any way whatsoever, but it's, it's my stream. That being said, uh, this week I decided to uh, also do something totally unfair, and I want you to send a comment uh, with the most interesting name that you have for your pet, and it could be a pet that you've had earlier in your life that's you know passed away, um, or a pet you have now. Just share your cat, lizard, dog, dragon, etc. pet names, and I will very fairly pick one person uh, who will get the prize from Algolia. So I will take a moment to drink some water and let y'all type something in the comments. And by the way, I'm not doing any fact checking. So if you make up a name for a cat, you don't really have that. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be totally fine with that. Uh, Scott Murfederf. I can get behind that. I just, you know, I I want to see you like in a, in a in a large park at the top of your lungs, yelling Murph a Durf. Uh, Mark Jones, Bohannon, that is also pretty cool as well. Uh, Ariadne, I called my cat Java, though you're a functional programmer. Java is a pretty cool name. Uh, I like this sand, sand, sand uh, Baba Ganoush. I can get behind that. Let's see if we can get just one or two more. Uh, and then I will use generative AI to pick the, uh, pick the winner of the Algolia prize. I'll give it a few more seconds. By the way, this is also kind of like my passive way to see, is anyone actually here? 
so uh, I have at least five people, which I will take. That's great. I have flown uh, to a different country, <laughs> to Canada, actually once to give a phone gap talk. And uh, there were about five people. But it wasn't my money, so I didn't feel too terribly bad about it. All right, I don't see any more comments coming in yet. So I am going to, oh, I kind of like all of these. Like these, you know, again, I'm imagining being in the yard yelling for your animal and yelling these names and <laughs> all of these being kind of cool. So you know what? Uh, I'm, I'm going to go with uh, Java. Uh, Ariadne, hopefully I'm saying your name right. You are the winner. Uh, so what I ask is uh, send me an email. And then I will connect you to, with the person who will ship you out uh, some Algolia swag. Or it could be a new car. It's probably not a new car. Probably not. Um, but uh, it's definitely going to be some some swag. So hopefully, hopefully you like it. All right. Thank you, everybody. Let's actually get into... Let me just move some stuff around here and switch my view no that's not it at all this is it okay so y'all should be seeing uh my lovely face and the github repo so by the way uh and i will say this every week uh i will use one repository for all the demos and stuff that i show here it is uh cf jedi master slash code br uh, so if you're watching this uh, later and you want a copy of whatever I build during the show, uh, this is where you would find it. So what I want to talk today about is working with APIs. And that is uh, specifically working with APIs on a website. And that's absolutely not anything new. Uh, we have Microsoft and Internet Explorer to thank for um, adding the XML HTTP request object probably back in 96 or 97 or so. Um, if somebody has the uh, precise year that that came out, uh, add it in the comments. Uh, but web browsers for a very long time have been able to do network requests. Um, and there's all kind of APIs out there uh, that I call like the ideal API that they are built for websites. And uh, I want to start off with that because I'm going to start with like a good example uh, before I kind of crush your soul and, and, and kind of talk about how to deal with the ones that are, you know, less than ideal. So we're going to start off with uh, the dad joke API because why not? And it doesn't have any authentication. It's really, really easy to use. Uh, and you can literally see it's hitting one simple endpoint and you get a joke back. So this one is absolutely built for the web, should work just fine. And let's make use of it. So I'm going to go into uh, my editor and I have a file called a folder called API. And because this is not like the main gist of what I want to show, it's just kind of like, you know, like the uh, good example. We'll call this test zero.html. And we'll scap all the quick page. And for those of you in the um, in in the audience, all two to three hundred of you, uh, y'all, let me know if this text is not uh, big enough. I've already made it a little bit bigger, but if I can go bigger, then I will. And like I say every session, uh, or every time I'm I'm on stage and showing stuff like this. Uh, I tend to build my initial demo all in one file. So I put my HTML, my CSS, and my JavaScript. Certainly in the real world out there, I separate my files to make them more manageable, but I kind of want to make it a little bit easier easier for us to work with this. Scott said a little bigger, and if Scott says jump, I say how high and where's my beer? All right, so this is going to be our dad joke. I demo. Let's call it. Guess what? <laughs> dad joke. A, a, dad joke API demo. And I know that uh, the API is just going to return a joke, so I'm just going to plop on here a empty div where I will drop that 
I will drop that. So before I go any further, open my terminal here and just fire up a quick web server. Uh, I am using a NPM command line called HTTP-server, uh, which lets you go into a folder and fire a web server up. Very handy. I'm pretty sure I've talked it before. I talked about it before on this show. Um, but if I have not, and this is new to you, if you go to my YouTube channel, I have a short five minute video where uh, I show installing the CLI and working with it and it's just darn handy. So I'm gonna open this up and it should show me next to nothing. I'm gonna preemptively open up my console. All right, so we want to hit the API. So I'm gonna go back to the documentations uh, endpoints find a random dad joke, and it is just that. Uh, I do know I do notice that they're passing an accept header, so I may need that, but I'm not going to worry about that for right now. I'm going to go into my code and let's minimize this, and let's start writing code. Um, content loaded. And it's false. Basically, when the web page is loaded, we're going to run the init function. All right, so we had our endpoint. Let's just say let request equals await fetch home saw like that. So that will do the initial network re request. My response will be await rec.json. And before we even bother rendering anything at all, let's just make sure it's actually working. And double checking because I am typing live. That looks right to me. So we'll go back here, go into my browser and reload. And uh, aha, I get an error. Unexpected token, you know, so and so is not valid JSON. If we look at the network panel, and uh, make this it may be too big. There we go. We hit the API. The response was HTML. So that's my fault. Their documentation clearly showed in the curl request uh, saying that you should pass that you are looking for application JSON. I understand the reason for that. It feels a little needy if you ask me, but whatever. And fetch. I'm going to add a optional prom, uh, parameter. We'll do headers and accept an application JSON. So basically this is the formal way of saying, hey, I'm hitting your API and I would like JSON back. So that will fix everything and it will work just fine. Let me just reload, go back to my console. There we go, I got my response, I got the ID and the joke. All I care about is a joke. So let's quickly write that out. So document query selector on joke, enter HTML equals response that joke. And that should be all we need because again, this was an API made for people to use in their stuff. Uh, white part, whiteboards are remarkable. Um, wh what do you call a criminal going down the stairs? Condescending. Oh, my kids are going to hear that tonight. I can't wait. Uh, so I'm going to stop now because I could reload this like all day long uh, and just go crazy. But my point is, you know, when you're working with a good modern API, this is kind of what you expect, you know, things just kind of work. Uh, I had one problem and then that was, uh, that was me uh, not reading the docs as clearly as I could. Uh, but you can see in the code really was, you know, this, you know, three lines to make that network request pass the proper header and then just work with the response. By the way, if you've never have seen fetch before, let me know. I could potentially do a whole session on it, but it is the, I wouldn't even say modern way because it's been around for at least five plus years. Uh, it is the replacement for the old XML HTTP request thing is that we used to use for doing network calls. Um, you would be 
uh, forgiven for not knowing that because jQuery made it super easy. Just, you know, dollar sign dot Ajax and it handled wrapping that object for you. Uh, fetch is just a heck of a lot easier to use and a heck of a lot simpler. Uh, but here we are. We have a working example, a web page using a remote API. Everything is kosher. It's awesome. So let's send this to hell and back again. So I am going to share a website with you called Data is Plural. Uh, it is a free newsletter by Jeremy Singervine. Uh, it's been around wow, since 2015. Um, I know I subscribed like ooh, probably five years ago. And this newsletter, basically every edition will send out uh, four or five data sets that are public. And it's completely random stuff. So crime statistics, uh, breakdown of food diets in Germany, you know, just random sets of data that are free for public use for you to do whatever you want to with it. Um, I, I like building API demos. I like hitting APIs. I like working with data and uh, doing, you know, visualizations, charting and stuff like that. I, I find that fun because I am admittedly very, very weird. Uh, so this has been a great newsletter for me and a great uh, way to get ideas for blog posts. So uh, let me get the link up here. Uh, March 6th, which was about two weeks or so ago. I'm looking at the email and they have a thing about real time airport disruptions. Um, I, I'm one of those weird people who likes to travel, um, mostly because I've learned the hacks to do it better. I've got status on my airline of choice. Um, I actually pay for lounge access to make uh, my layovers <clears throat> that much you know easier to work with. Uh, and oh my God, I must have stopped reading pinball machines. Oh, I am going to do something with that later. Anyway, um, so I like to fly. I also really like commercial aircraft. I like looking at planes. I like being at the airport and looking outside and seeing them. I, it just makes me happy. So they shared uh, in this newsletter a link to the National Airspace System status. And you can see active airport events. And, and by the way, I'm not flying today or tomorrow or whatever, uh, but I I just like this. I, I think this is uh, pretty, pretty cool. Uh, so in this, um, uh, back in the uh, newsletter, they mentioned that there is a minimal API linked to from the site. Uh, that pre that presents it as a lovely XML formatted file. And we could look at this and we could see, let me make that a little bigger. All right. That is the XML data uh, that is uh, going to uh, render that, that page. Now, as you can see, there's not a heck of a lot here. Um, I think this dashboard is using a couple of different things. But this this is the the API that that I wanted to uh, show. And one kind of interesting thing about this, uh, when people think of APIs, I think a lot of times they they think about a uh, interactive input output type thing. So I'm sending data in, getting data back. Uh, I, I'm interacting with some remote resource. There's also APIs out there that are pretty flat in terms of you can't send any arguments. So this particular one, um, at least as far as it's documented, uh, there, there's no parameters, I believe. You basically have the URL and you get what you get and you live with it. And uh, that's, that's all you have. So I was looking at this and I thought, all right, let's think about how would we use this in a web page? It's, it's XML. Um, and XML is... a uh, is you know what I used to use in the old days, you know, walking to work uphill and snow both ways, five miles, etc. Uh, but browsers do have XML support built in. You could you know walk the the uh, XML DOM tree and do stuff with it. But before we even think about that, 
let's just start simple. Let, let, let's say we want to get this XML and just like maybe render it in a text field. Let's just start there and see what happens. So I'm going to go back to uh, my file, my folder, and we will make test real.html just to kind of signify that this is the one that I'm working with. Copy this out. I'm going to copy my script tag from the last one. And we'll keep that for right now. And we will say, I will put stuff here, <laughs> here, text area, not even that. Let's, well, yeah, let's do a text area. ID equals dump. Close that, close a paragraph, et cetera. So, all right. So my thinking is that before you even think about doing any kind of XML parsing or whatever, let's just hit that endpoint, get the data in and render it. So let me go back to my browser and get that URL. So I like that. Uh, it is not returning a, a JSON. So I'll just get rid of all the optional stuff and just plain hit it. And I always forget, but I'm pretty sure it's not text uh, when you, you know, Studio was trying to help me and I ignored it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, if you don't know what you're getting back, .text will just return it. It won't try to parse it automatically. And then get rid of that. And let's just see if we can get the information. Worry about the XML parsing later. So let's go back here. Reload. Oh, test real. And boom. So the first thing we hit is a lovely cores error. And if this is your first time hearing about a cores error, oh my sweet summer child, I feel so, so sorry for you. Uh, basically, uh, what you're seeing is this. If a remote, a remote resource uh, has not set itself up to be used by remote uh, sources, then the browser is going to notice that and essentially block you from using it. It is, it is essentially a security system where the browser is saying, you know what, that API, it didn't say it wouldn't be used. It didn't say it was available for remote use. So I think you just shouldn't have it. And that is what you're getting here. And there's actually an interesting tool, testcores.org, that allows you to you know, test stuff like that. So uh, if we did, we'll go back to the I can has joke, copy that API, put that in the remote URL and do send requests. And we will see all kind of things being you know, basically <clears throat> the proper network events running. So this is an example of a good one. But if we try our real API, the one that we want to use, copy and paste that in there. I get to the request and see the error event fired. So typically, um, a if nothing in the site's documentation talks about browser usage, uh, then you could probably assume that it's, it's not set up for cores. This is another excellent way to test that before you write code and see that it actually failed. So this is to be expected. It is a relevant error and so forth. And awesome because Taylor just said something. Solve the course error using a Webpack's V proxy. Yes and no. Uh, there, <laughs> that is what I'm going into now is like, so what's the next step? So a proxy is how I would typically solve this. And a proxy is some server side resource on my server, wherever I'm hosting where my client side code can hit my server side code. And all it's really doing is kind of proxying that request off to the remote resource. It's doing that work for you. Uh, that is typically how I would solve it. And how I would set up that proxy is pretty varied because it, it, it depends on you know what you're building locally. So if you have like an application server, like. Uh, PHP or ColdFusion, Node.js, Express, et cetera, 
then it's trivial. You just set up some local system that responds to a network request. It does the proxy and sends data back and you start calling that instead. Uh, my kind of platform of choice has been the Jamstack. So, you know, typical kind of simple static web pages. And I normally, when I need server-side stuff, will look at a serverless function. So there's a variety of options that we can use with that. I host my website uh, on Netlify. And one of the features that Netlify has is the ability to use serverless functions with your websites. So I'm gonna look at that as my solution. Now I will say real quick, that if the only thing you want to do is proxy and you don't wanna do anything else, you don't wanna to touch the response, uh, they have essentially a one line solution for that and a redirect file, which is, is pretty handy. Uh, that's not going to work for, for reasons that will hopefully make sense. Um, but let's look at using a Netlify serverless function and again, I could use something else. I could use a Cloudflare serverless function. I could use a Pipedream serverless function or an Amazon Lambda. Um, I like the idea of the Netlify one because it's tied together with my website. So let's uh, open up Terminal real quick. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. I'm going to kill the little web server. And what I want to do then is use the Netlify CLI, which I've already installed, Netlify, Netlify. I could also do NTL. Um, I'm going to use the Netlify CLI to kind of like scaffold a serverless function uh, in my folder for me. And you know what? I want to make this a little bit more focused. Uh, so we are going to go into directly the API folder. That way I have less clutter um, on the left-hand side. And I'm all about less clutter in my life. All right, so what we're going to do, and uh, NPL is a short for Netlify, we are going to uh, basically say, hey, this folder is a Netlify website. And I know it's NTL sites something. And there we go, NTL sites create. Uh, so by the way, uh, typically, I would have a website that would be in a GitHub repository. And in Netlify, I can use their web dashboard and just say, hey, make a new site and connect it to this GitHub repository. And I don't do any of this local stuff typically. It's a little bit quicker. But uh, because we're just kind of testing and playing around here, I, I'm not going to have a GitHub repo just for this little folder here. So we will do create. We will name this uh, API demo safe to delete. It's a very long name, but that way I know that it's totally fine for me to get rid of this. It's asking me my team and there we go. So at this point, uh, I can then do other Netlify stuff like work with their serverless functions. So I did NTL functions and I get the help and I could see that I can create and I could do other things. I want to create, and I'm going to give it a name, and I guess we'll call this uh, airport info. I could maybe do get airport info, but I'll just call it airport info. And it's going to ask us some questions. It's going to be a serverless function, not an edge function. I'm going to let it default to the path. And I will pick JavaScript because I barely know TypeScript and I definitely don't know Go and Rust. And we will do basic hello world and that done. So what this thing, what this did is it scaffold a uh, function in my Netlify functions folder. Let me give this a bit more room. And it wrote a simple function. Now, one kind of weird thing, and I am I'm doing this on uh, March nineteenth, two thousand twenty-four. Uh, their command line uh, scaffolds an older version of their functions. Uh, a couple months ago, they did kind of like a major platform update and did some really really cool things with functions. I'm not touching on any of the cool things that they did. Uh, we're just going to kind of try to keep it simple. 
but this kind of uh, function shape is based on the old one. And if you go into their docs, and that went into the wrong window. Let me try that again. So y'all could see, oops, control click. There we go. Uh, we will switch to JavaScript and I am just going to copy and paste their very, very default, nice and short, small one. And in theory, I will comment this out. In theory, I could do just that. In theory. So I'm going to do LFI dev, which will essentially run my local uh, website. And it's giving me some warnings, but I don't care about warnings. Let's see if this actually worked. And 404 not found, that's because I have no index.html. But if I do that, there we go. That's the web page I did. So uh, I, I did that a little bit fast, but just to kind of recap, uh, using Netlify to essentially run my local folder as a web page to mimic what Netlify would do in production if I were to deploy this live. Uh, it did its own port 8888 and it fired up my browser for me. I don't have an index page, which, so that's why we saw the error, but my HTML files are working. And just to prove that the function is working, there is a default path to all of your functions that you can modify, but it is Netlify functions. And I called it airport info, airport info. I should get a hello world. All right, so I'm gonna copy that link, uh, that, that destination, because that's gonna be our new um, API endpoint. So let's just uh, turn that off for now and do this. And yeah, okay, no, nope, no, nope, that's not what I meant. Uh, this, yeah, and I'm actually going to make it like that. All right, so all I did was copy and paste the original line that was going to the remote resource, and it's now going to my local resource. And we should see in the console um, the text response, which should be still hello world. So let's save this, go back to my web page, reload, and we got a response. And I'll make that a little bigger, hello world. All right, almost there. So uh, now I want to update my function to actually uh, do, and the only reason I'm keeping this around, let me actually drop this in a new file. Uh, I am still kind of new to the new version of their functions. Like my website's still using the old ones. So I am going to keep an old one around just in case I screw things up. So let's try making a network request. And this is from the server, uh, but I still have fetch, right? So uh, you know what? Fetch works in Node. So why not just do it in our serverless function? And I am pretty darn sure that we can use the console message and it should show below. So I'll say serverless, serverless func called and say about to return. And then finally, we will just straight up return the response. And in theory, that should be it. So I should get the, the XML back. We'll see, we'll save this. I'm gonna scroll down and uh, the Netlify function I ran, Netlify dev, you know, it recognized that I modified my surplus function. It reloaded what it need to. Uh, and we can go back to our browser, reload, and be happy with the errors. Ex unexpected token export. Did I export something? This is literally the same code I had before. That's why, you know, this is why I backed it up. 
I swear. Let's comment this out and bring back what I had. For default async. Yeah, I save it and then reload. And oh, I really did break it. It was working. Let me uh so this was everything. Oh, you know what? I wonder if I did not save it. Unexpected token export. I wonder if I didn't save it and I just didn't recognize it. Let me copy the original original. All right. This is what it shipped with. Save it. Scroll down. And it may not be reloading anymore, but we'll see. Uh -huh, there we go. It returned. So it did not like uh, me taking, oops, me taking the stuff straight from here. Write a function. Yeah. I just assumed, you know, worst comes to worst. Uh, I'm going to blame their docs. No, I'm not going to blame their docs. Um, Export default async. Yeah. Well, you know what? We may not be using the new version of it. it may just get by because it's really just a change to um, the shape of the function. And what I'm trying to show is not going to change that much. And you know what? Screw it. Uh, I will. Now, I'm curious to know why their code's not working. But for right now, we're going to stick with this. And just to make sure that it is actually working, I'll add a couple exclamation marks and we'll go back, go back to my demo and make sure I see hello world, bang, bang at the end. All right, so let's just give up on this, get rid of all my stuff I commented out and make sure we're focused. And now what I wanna do is add in my network call. I'm going to take right from the client side code I used to have. I'm going to hit that remote resource and say let response equals await rec.json, uh, rec.txt, because it's not. And we will straight up return the response. And let's actually just turn plain text and see what happens. So, in case I did that too, a bit too quick, my serverless function now is calling that remote API. Should be getting the XML back. Uh, I don't need that subject anymore. And I'm just returning it. And in theory, we should see, yes, XML. Still, uh, the actual result was turned to JSON, uh, but it worked. So I have a response and then the response value. So now, I have my XML data, and if I wanted to, I have a text area called dump. I could say document.query selector dump dot value equals response dot response. And actually, I don't like doing response dot response, so uh, we will say return a airport info like that. So the XML response and airport info key, and we will go back here and say response.airportinfo. And it's going to work great, he said with confidence. Reload, undefined, response airport info, all lowercase. What did I do wrong here? Response.airportinfo. Yeah, I know it's an unknown word. Oh, because it was plain text, uh, the browser didn't actually parse it into a real object that I could do dot so-and-so on it. Now when I reload, I should see, yay, a bunch of XML. So I have solved the cores issue now. So I can hit that, no problem. But now it's actually something to, to, to do something that uh, is a bit useful in cases like this. And that is to reshape the response. So client-side JavaScript code can take that XML, parse it as XML, 
and do stuff with it. But oh God, nobody wants to do that. Uh, so I know that there is a XML, the JSON package out there. Uh, we will go to Google, not Bing, not Bing, no NPM XML to JSON. Google recommends using Chrome. I recommend you don't bug me about this every darn time I come here. So NPM XML to JSON. We have a couple of options. No big surprise there. Uh, how about simple XML to JSON? So usage is simple XML to JSON converter. Right. So the first thing is convert XML. You pass it the XML to convert and returns JSON. So let's uh let's try it. So I'm gonna go back to here. I'm gonna kill Netlify Dev. I'm going to install XML to simple XML to JSON. Uh, and let's go into my serverless function. And let's just copy and post and copy and paste direct from there. We will require what they require us to require. I don't think we need to create AST, but we'll keep it simple. And we will copy their line. So right here. So once my JSON, yeah, that's a fine variable name for now. But the XML string is response. And then let's return my JSON. My JSON brings all the boys to the yard. Darn right, it's better than yours. And in theory, I'll run NPL dev again, fire up my local web server. And it again opened my browser. I'll just kill that. And we'll go back. And if I didn't screw this up, I should see JSON data back. Object, object, yeah. So when I put it into a text area. But if we look at the console, we get, boom, we get proper data. We get children. So it's a little oddly parsed, you know, children, et cetera. So I'm not a big fan of that. I want this to look a little bit nicer. So I'm gonna go back into my serverless function and let's just console.log my JSON. Cause I bet we could shape this up a little bit for it to look a bit nicer. So I'm going to reload this that quickly just so I could see it here. And the first thing I see is that, you know what? I could return just children. So let's go ahead and say uh, dot children. And that should be an array. So that'll be a little bit simpler. I'm going to reload this again. And that didn't work because I need to wrap this, I believe. So what happened to your live, live code? Oh, top level key was airport status information and then children. So we will say that. Yeah, that's, that's totally going to work. Totally. I have complete faith and confidence in this. And oh, I'm definitely returning an array now. So that's better. And if we go back to our terminal, we could see, bam, we could see multiple things. Now, <clears throat> based on how this XML parser is returning it, uh, you could see it has things like update time uh, and then delay types. I don't care about the DTT file. Just looking at that, I know that's wrong. So what I wanna do is a couple of things here. I'm gonna make a new response. Let's say, uh, yeah, and it's nice and vague. And I can see the update time being important. I will make this look a little bit nicer. And that will be my JSON array item zero update time <laughs> and then the content variable. And so we have that and I do baby steps. So let's see if, uh, make sure this is right. So my idea here is that I'm actually making a new variable. It's going to be a reshaped version of that. So right now I should just have update time. I'll reload here in the browser. I haven't broken anything yet. There's the original JSON data and 
Boom. Okay, data is looking nicer. And now what I want is I want all of my delay types uh, to be array items. So I'm just going to say, you know, status. No, um, we're getting airport info. We'll call it info. We'll make that an array. We'll default to that. So I need to look at these children. So what I want to do is actually JSON stringify this so I could format that a little bit better. No. By the way, if you haven't seen uh, these two arguments in JSON stringify, the second one is a uh, optional uh, function, I believe they can call the parse up. I don't want that. What I do want is for it to add tabs. So when it renders in console, it's a little bit easier to read. So again, go back to my browser, reload. And, you know, normally I have my resolution a bit higher so I can, you know, on the right side, just reload and left side, kind of see what I'm having here. And wow, that is a uh, way more complex than I thought it was gonna be. Uh, that XML data really kind of went crazy, but that's okay because what we can do is just start, you know, making this a little bit simpler. Let me give us a bit more space here. Uh, this is just crazy, crazy huge, um, but we can work with that. So the first thing I want uh, is that given that we have this um, array of children, uh, it looks like I want to look for the ones that have a delay type. So let me just do this and say, let delays equals my JSON dot filter. We'll use the array uh, filter function. And we will say uh, delay type is exist, right? So uh, I think I could just do the delay type. So basically, if delay type doesn't exist, that'll be null. And that should return false. And so in theory, this will only return the array items that have a delay type exist. Now, I feel like I'm being too clever there and I'm going to regret it, but let's just see if we got at least one back. All right, I'm gonna scroll past all this and I got rid of that top level uh, debug. So, yep, I broke it. I broke it and I got, I got nothing in council. Let's uh, do this again. Reference error. And see, why didn't I get anything in a... Oh, I got a 500 there. Let's actually look at the network panel and make that a little bit higher so I can actually read it. And 500 internal server error. Now, I will say I'm a little confused that this is not uh, dumping out the screen. Uh, what's wrong? But let me perhaps try to not be so clever and do something like if b dot delay type. Let's go back up to look at it. Make sure, yep, lowercase t. If this exists, we'll return true. Otherwise, return false. And in, in theory, oh. You know, that could have been it right there. I had delay, not delays. So I could go back and make it clever again, but no, I suffered. And I have another internal server error. What the heck, why are you being? So how about we just do this? Return true. So in theory, this will do nothing. And... Let's just uh, console.log D, make sure each element of the array is what I expected. Going back, reloading, getting data back again. Yeah. So I'm, I'm probably being dumb uh, in taking an arbitrary object, uh, seeing if it exists. Uh, I assumed I would get null 
if it didn't exist. I feel like this is JavaScript 101 that I'm feeling live in front of y'all. And we're almost out of time. This may be a uh, two-parter. Uh, but if you're in the audience and you realize the dumb mistake that I'm making, and just make sure if d dot uh, delay type if how about this if delay type and b return true return false stop console logging and see if I broke it again I did not and oh that's not the terminal I want to go to. And yeah, it that worked. Okay. So now we should have an array of delays that if we actually added to our data uh, would be a bit easier to read perhaps, uh, but we still have it being very, very complex. Uh, so, uh, oh, I'm struggling here. It's the first time I haven't actually finished within like the hour that I give myself. Um, so I'm I'm having a bit of a struggle in terms of what I want to do next. I think what I may do, uh, since we got about like, you know, part of the way through. So we have the serverless function, right? Our client side code is correctly calling it. The serverless function is proxying to the remote system. And we're doing some data massaging on it uh, to make it, easier for the client-side code to work with it because we don't want to parse XML in client-side code. I mean, you're kind of seeing the struggle uh, that I'm going through here and just kind of remapping this. Um, and I know it can be done. I just, you know, am, am running close uh, to time. So I'm going to say, uh, those of you who are in the audience right now, those of you who lasted a good 15 minutes, first off, I appreciate you. But do we have any objections to wrapping this up next week to kind of, you know, putting a tie and the bow in this and seeing? And also, that'll give me time to look and see why the Netlify v2 function thing didn't quite work out of the box. And we could show that as well. Uh, but uh, what do you all think out there in the audience? Should we put a pause here, check it into GitHub and come back next week? Let me see here and stop staring to the right. I got at least one totally fine. So I know how I'll, I'll at least have one person here uh, next week. And, and like I said, um, I wanna also look at the Netlify stuff and see why the V2 didn't work. One, one reason I'm not too worried about the Netlify V2 stuff is because literally the logic that I'm doing, transforming the XML, making it nicer for uh, the client side code, the crap around it, you know, the export function and all that, that's a Netlify function. If I moved it to Lambda, it would be different, but the stuff that I'm writing, that would remain the same. So it's not really, it's not really a Netlify uh, specific type thing because you could take that same business logic and move it to Cloudflare, for example. Um, I know people worry about serverless lock-in and platform lock-in in general. And for like something that is this particular simple, uh, I'm not too worried about lock-in. So uh, I'm also getting a request for fetch. That is not too bold at all. Uh, but I will say that's something I would like to do for in a whole hour by itself. Because um, if you were new to fetch, like when I switched to passing the header in to make the API work, you know, stuff like that, um, I think could use some more fleshing out. So, uh, that was fun. Um, I, you know, when I started this whole thing, like I wanted to build stuff live and see what happens. And, uh, we didn't necessarily fail. We just didn't finish. And this means I have more content for next time. Um, so next time, uh, we will finish this up and talk a bit more about net, uh, Netlify functions. Uh, I am definitely going to do fetch, and I think I want to do that sooner rather rather than later. Uh, so that will be on the calendar as well. And uh, thank you all for uh, sitting around, sitting around, listening to me ramble and all that. I appreciate it. 
Um, my name is Raymond Camden, and you can find me at RaymondCamden.com. If you have any uh, questions, feel free to reach me out. Uh, Ariadne, make sure you email me, uh, and I'll put my email address in the comments, um, and I will hook you up uh, with the person who will get you your prize. Thank you all very much. I greatly appreciate it, and thanks for the comments. It's very nice to know people are listening. Y'all have a good rest of the week and talk to y'all later. Bye.